Alright, Joey here and I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and repair an old Brone uh, bathroom ventilation fan <coughs> or exhaust fan as some people call it. Um, I went to a customer's house and uh, I verified that their old ventilation fan was out of service. So I went to my local home improvement store and bought a couple of things because I wasn't sure what direction I was going to go with it yet. And uh, so I got this Brown 688 ventilation fan kit, which comes with this unit as you see here. Um, and then it comes with, of course, the grill assembly. And um, then I bought a Brown BP27, which I thought might be the more viable option. Uh, that's a replacement man, uh, motor and fan assembly. And of course, that's what I turned. Uh, it turned out that I needed. Um, <clears throat> I didn't feel like going in the attic, and there was no need for the extra expense to the customer. Um, he just wanted it working. He didn't care about upgrading it or nothing like that. So I'll show you the differences here. Um, this new style Brone fan, as you can see, it's the motor sits on top of the motor mounting plate, and then the fan is below it. Whereas the old style, as you can see here, hopefully without too much sun glare, that the uh, motor mounts opposite of the new style one. The old style, the motor mounting plate or bracket goes above the motor and then the two studs from the motor go through the bracket and then there's two nuts that hold it on. And that's it and then your plug plugs in. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I ended up using. Um, that's for the older style Brone. Uh, I don't know the model number of the older style but you'll know by looking at it if the plate is above the motor. Um, or the, the arms of the mounting plate go above the motor and you see the nuts sticking through the top with the studs then this one will probably work for you um, I don't know how many different older styles of Brown there are but the one I dealt with this worked and I've dealt with a couple before and, and it worked so um, the things you want to do uh, before you get started just deciding you need a motor first thing you want to do is take the uh, the grill off and to do that they have these you'll grab it on either side and pull it straight down from the fan assembly and it'll only come down so far a couple inches and you'll see these little mounting springs in there reach in on both sides and squeeze them in all the way like that and then you can pull them out of the little slots that are in the motor mounting plate. So once you get your your grill out of the way, then you can go to assessing the situation and figuring out if the motor is bad or you have no power to the unit. And first you want to look around and see if there's separate switches or what in the, in the bathroom or wherever this may be. Um, you can just unplug this that's your motor plug and then you want an ohm meter a voltmeter whatever and this is a two prong you want to check it for power if it doesn't have power you want to look for a switch or source of power that'll power this some bathrooms <coughs> may have a separate switch just for the ventilator fan and some may have one switch that works a light and the ventilator fan so you want to maybe turn on all the switches if you have to however many there may be in that bathroom and then check for power here and then if you happen to turn them all on you get power then you can start cutting one off at a time and see which one kills your power if you turn them all on and you don't get any power then you probably want to pull the mounting plate so you can get to the uh, wire nuts behind this mounting plate because this also acts as your junction box um, 
can see here where the wires go in, usually there's a little adapter here with two screws on it that clamp onto the Romex wire, and then that'll go in, and then there'll be a couple wire nuts in here. So you could have a bad connection. Um, so you want to verify that. Like I said, the, the newer unit will, or the older unit will have a, a screw, and you could take the one screw out, and then the other side of the mounting plate will have two tabs that are just in slots in the uh, in the in the can assembly and then it'll tilt out and slide out of there and you could take this motor assembly out and the receptacle will still be there because it's mounted to a, a mounting plate underneath this and then you'll see the wire nuts and wires in there and once you verify there's no power here if, if you don't have power there and you can't get power to it by turning all the switches on you could go so far as to check breakers in the panel if you have to, um, which wouldn't be a bad idea either. And then uh, if you don't see any breakers tripped and all the switches are on that are supposed to be, that you think might be feeding this and you still don't have power, the safest way to do it, I would recommend a non-contact voltage meter or either, or I should say a non-contact voltage sensing device. Uh, some of them come in the form of it looks like a little pen apparatus. I have a um, I happen to like the Klein meters. I have an older Klein meter, which is a CL2000, and I prefer that meter because it. Uh, I don't think they make them anymore, but it, it measures AC and DC amperage, which I could also use it for automotive applications. <coughs> um, and it also has a built-in uh, AC non-contact. Uh, Volt, uh, voltage sensor and um, so it works great and you just get one of those voltage sensors and you can hold it up to the wires and it'll beep if there's voltage present so once you verify there's no voltage present then you should be safe to take the wire nuts off see if you have corrosion in the wire nut what have you um, usually that's not the case usually if it's a bad connection the wire will pretty much be broken or fall right out of the wire nut you'll know right away it's a bad connection. Um, I haven't really seen that. Usually it's been a bad motor. Um, on a rare occasion you might see a bad switch. That could be possible. Um, <clears throat> and that just requires more advanced troubleshooting techniques. Um, and you know that's when you, when you get into you know disconnecting the wires on this end, going and pulling the, the, the switches out and seeing which one's not doing anything and that's probably the one feeding this and then you take the wires off the switch and maybe you connect both ends of this of these two wires and then you're down there with the ohm meter checking um, for continuity then you disconnect these wires verify the the continuity went away and then you know you got these wires i have more advanced tools i have uh uh i have uh tools that have uh uh, they send a signal out on the wire, so I could hook I could hook a tool on here, hot or dead, and it'll transmit a signal over the line. And I have a tracker; it's a tone and tracker toolkit, is what it is. And I can track the signal um, coming down the wall to exactly where it goes, what switch it goes to, or what have you. And I could very easily troubleshoot it if it was an electrical fault. Like I said, nine times out of ten, it's a bad motor. So, but still, you want to verify that by at least checking for voltage here, at the at the source for the motor. And if your voltage is good, you have 110, 120 volt, then you can go ahead and get this motor kit, which is again BP27. It's a Brown replacement part, and you can go ahead and swap that motor out. And then it goes in the reverse of what you took it out. It'll go back in with the two tabs, and then there'll be one screw. Make sure you got it. In the, the older one had a couple of different holes, and I was putting it in the wrong hole, and it almost fell on my head. And I realized it was another hole where the threaded hole was. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, be mindful of that. And then, um, then you can plug it back in and test it before you put your grill back on, make sure it works. Then you could put your grill back on there and you could put a paper towel or a piece of tissue or toilet paper, make sure it's sucking in, that it's working properly, and it should hold that tissue or paper towel or 
piece of toilet paper to the grill when it's on then you know it's uh, sucking air in and working as it's designed so um, yeah that's it just be mindful of the of the differences um, don't try to be like me and think you're gonna save a couple of dollars and buy something and it's opposite of what what you need to replace now I have to waste time and gas going back to the store to return this because I didn't need it so uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit um, and you can get your uh, exhaust your bathroom ventilation fan working again catch you later